Hey, good morning. Happy Easter. I'm uh, sitting in bed reading, and Ginny is here snoring with me, and I'm drinking my coffee. Um, and I was thinking about how hard parenting is. <laughs> but um, back to Easter, I read this morning on Twitter, Glennon Doyle said, um, Friday is the pain, Saturday is the waiting, and Sunday is the joy. And she said, and that's the way it always is. So for those of you who've been part of the Christian tradition, um, whether you still practice or not, it's true with pain, I think. And that's one of the messages of Easter, is that there will be pain and loss, and then there'll be waiting, and then then there'll be some kind of resurrection. And it might be years, and it might be decades um, before you can look back and say, okay, Something grew out of that. Okay. I'm not a theologian. Um, so I was thinking about parenting, and of course I always think about positive discipline. Um, and I wanted to touch really briefly on um, one of the tenets of positive discipline is a misbehaving child is a discouraged child. And I'll put in parentheses, um, that can also be a child who doesn't know what the boundaries are. So if you have something in your house and a two-year-old walks in and dumps it out on the floor, uh, that's a failure of several things. Uh, one is uh, you didn't child-proof your house because two-year-olds always do dump at work um, and it, perhaps there could have been a conversation like um, I see you love these shells buttons whatever it is something safe um, I'd love to look at them with you and I'm going to show you how I'm willing to look at them with you so um, but, of course, if you don't catch the child in time, then there's just, uh, we'll need to pick this up together. You can pick up the blue ones, and I'll pick up the yellow ones, and following through with that. But anyway, so if a misbehaving child is a, what did I just say? A misbehaving child is a discouraged child, um, then apart from the not understanding part that children can be in a lot. Um, there are positive discipline has four mistaken goals and the mistaken goals are attention, seeking attention, um, assumed inadequacy. The child, uh, feels like they can't do it. So why bother, uh, seeking power and revenge. Um, fortunately, young children don't really go to revenge, so um, if that's going on, that's a big deal. Um, so most children kind of have a home base where they live in one of the three uh, uh, power, attention, or um, assumed inadequacy. Um, and so uh, positive discipline addresses each of these individually and um, acknowledges that all, cho all people deserve attention. They all deserve power. Um, we all have times when we feel inadequate, but it's um, finding appropriate ways to deal with that. Um, and that's super helpful. So we can talk a little bit more about that another time. Um, so 
Julie, my co-teacher, does a much better job with the mistaken goals because she goes over these in, with in her parenting classes, um, her parenting, her sessions with parents all the time because it's they're super helpful. So basically, um, if a child needs attention and is going about it inappropriately, you know, tapping you on the shoulder. 800 times and saying, mommy, 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 or yelling at you to you from another room or something that you find a way to address the need for attention. Um, it might be addressing it and putting it off for another time. I, I hear that you want me to talk to you and I would love to talk to you, but I can't right now until I have vacuum the living room. So as soon as I vacuum the living room, I will sit down and listen to your story. Um, one thing we do at school, I don't know if it's helpful, would be helpful at home is, um, if, uh, sit down and write down what a child is saying. That's, you know, give, taking dictation from a child is is a very focused attention and then reading their story back to them so that might be something they're angry about something they're sad about i really miss my mom okay let's write a letter to your mom and and you can say all the things you want to say um or just tell me about this block village that you just built um and it's also practice in storytelling and communication and all that good stuff but but that's you know, it's kind of a rare treat. Of course, you could overuse it and then your kid would be bored with it, I guess. But so that's attention. Uh, power. Again, we all deserve to have some power. But we don't, you know, need to have children don't need to have power over meal selection, what preschool they go to, whether they wear clothes today whether they brush their teeth, lots of things. Um, so we like to give people power when we can and it's appropriate and limit the power, you know, and then deal with the feelings. Boy, you really wanted to, you know, win that game. You want to win the game every time we play the way this game works. Um, you know, it's luck. And so even if you were the best person in the world at playing this game, sometime you just wouldn't win. So, um, but then, then maybe it would be helpful to point out something that they have power over. But right now you get to decide whether we go to the park or just play in the yard. Um, will you help me decide whether we watch the movie before or after dinner will you um you get to pick yada 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 um i think people can overdo choices um you know if you go through your whole day letting the child you know do you want the red plate or the blue plate do you want the green cup or the yellow cup do you want soft serve or regular ice cream i mean i think there too there can be too many choices um There don't need to be so many choices, but um, that's a way to give power where it's appropriate and not where it's ridiculous. Um, and undue attention. Un, uh, undue attention. I just did undue attention. Um, uh, assumed inadequacy. Assumed inadequacy is when a child feels like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So again, that might be a time for teaching or time for training is kind of the way positive discipline puts it. Um, but uh, one of the ways to address this is small steps. So, you know, you can't get dressed. Um, you just can't do it. I just can't. I can't. Um, okay, well, let's you can't put your boots on. Let's sit down. First, sit down. That'll make it easier. Okay, so, you know, which boot goes on which foot? If they don't know, you can say, this boot goes on this foot. Tap the foot. Um, 
you know, and then they make an attempt and some attempt and then you help them finish the task. So they're, they're addressing it as best they can that day. Um, so break down the task into small steps and support them in the small steps. It's how you learn everything. Um, yeah, it's hard. You've never done it before, or it's harder today or it feels hard today. I'm here to help you, but I need you to do the first part. So that's, um, assumed inadequacy. Uh, positive discipline has a great chart with each of the four mistaken goals and, and how, uh, there's columns for how it makes you feel or the adult, uh, what the child says and does, um, suggestions for how to change it. So it's really great. You have, you print it off the internet, you can look it up, positive discipline, four mistaken goals, print it off, hang it on the wall, wander over there and say, what is this child doing? Um, a lot of it is about how it makes you feel. Uh, power struggles make you feel challenged and angry and attention, uh, makes you feel, you know, overwhelmed and assumed inadequacy makes you feel guilty um, revenge really brings out the worst in us. Um, but again, a child who is acting out of revenge is really hurting. So they're, they're hurting. So they're going to hurt other people as a response. So they also need help and empathy. Um, so four mistaken goal chart on the internet, four mistaken goals as the main some of the main tools for positive discipline, but they have helpfully come up with 52 other tools. Um, and you can sign up, uh, for, to get a tool sent to you every week. So a tool is a concept like praise versus, um, encouragement which we've already talked about, um, is a concept, a way to think about how you deal with your children that can be helpful to them and to you. Um, another one is connection before correction, which means if you're going to have to intervene with your child because they're messing up, it's great if you can start it with some kind of personal connection with them so that they'll be more inclined to listen to you as opposed to just, I'll yell, I'll punish and they'll react because um, we all know how we tend to react when we're being punished. But if you can start with a connection or if you've maintained the connection that day, they'll be able to listen to the correction in a in a different way as you would be able to. Um, now I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> ah. <coughs> okay. Very professional video. Okay. Um, so the one I wanted to talk about today was um, positive discipline calls it eye to eye. So if a child is doing something and you don't want them to, uh, you are, I am on the playground and a child is uh, throwing sand at another child. Um, and I say, because they already know the rule, unless they've never been anywhere before, I say from wherever I am, you know, Mary, we don't throw sand. Mary, sand goes in the sandbox, something. If the other child is not already saying, don't throw sand at me. Um, so they keep say that they keep throwing sand. So. Um, people will say, my child didn't listen to me. It's like, okay, so the next thing you do, you have to do is you have to get up and you have to go over there. You just do, you do, you know, unless, you know, what the house is on fire. So you, you get up, you go over there, you kneel down, squat down eye to eye. Sometimes I bend over sideways cause I'm kind of old, but I try to get 
I try to get close and I say, oh, Mary, you are throwing sand. Um, and if it involves another child, I bring the other child in. Um, you know, John, did you like it when Mary was throwing sand? Um, John says he doesn't like people to throw sand. Why do you not like it, John? Oh, sometimes it gets in your eyes. It gets in your hair. Um, yeah, John doesn't like it when we throw sand. We don't throw sand on the playground. Sand is for the sandbox and for making mud. Do you understand? Cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And so eye to eye. So if I've gone up there, I've gotten down on their level. First of all, you're not going to tend to yell at them <laughs> because you are this close to them. So you're not going to yell. I mean, unless, I don't know, unless they just stab the dog or something you're going to tend to modulate your voice and talk to them like they're a human being um and they're going to tend to listen to you and if they turn away and try to run away you can scoop your arm around them and say up oh, you know what i need you to listen to this i need you to listen to john i need you to listen to me um and follow through with the whole conversation if they turn around and they're not facing you you can say it looks like you're not listening can you tell me what I just asked you to do or asked you to stop doing? Um, can you, do you understand what I just said and have them respond? Can you say, yes, Mary, I understood. Now I'm the child and both the teacher. Sorry, that's confusing. But anyway, yes, teacher, I understood. Did you understand what I word? Can you say, yes, teacher, I understood. Yes, teacher, I understood. So there's some reciprocity. Um, it's not punitive. It's, it's at the eye to eye level. It's just clear communication. Did, did you hear my words? Um, and then, you know, if they do it again, then you can say, oh, you know what? Today's not a good day to, to play in the sand. Um, we'll need to go home, go to another part of the park, um, stay away from John for a while. <clears throat> You know, we can try again tomorrow is a great redeeming phrase, I think. We can try again later. We can try again tomorrow. We can always try again. You know, whatever impulse the child has that they can't rein in today, you know, they can try again tomorrow. Uh, they're learning to rein in impulses. Anger impulses, attention impulses, power impulses, lots of impulses. Um, and we're there to help them co-regulate. Um, another thing that we know now from brain research is uh, something called mirror neurons, which we humans have. So um, if mirror neurons means uh, someone can reflect back to you your feelings or or, or help you modulate your feelings. So if I'm hysterically upset and the person that I'm with is very calm, then I will tend to regulate with them. I will tend to calm down just from being with them. You know, this think about an EMT or, you know, a flight attendant during a bumpy flight that, that they're calm, um, a nurse, their calm is going to help me regulate my calm. So that's part of what you're doing with the child who's hysterical, angry, whatever is you're, if you come close, so you have a relationship, you're not just yelling. Um, you can co-regulate. I, I see that you're really upset, but we're going to leave the park right now. Yeah, I know. I know you really wanted to stay. Um, it's okay that you're upset. I totally get it, but we're going to go now. I'm going to help you go. It's another thing we say a lot at school. Um, I see you're having trouble leaving. I'm going to help you. And not in a snarky way. It really, hopefully coming from a, I really, I'm going to help you. Um, cause you can't, you really can't do it on your own. You can't stop whatever it is. Um, so I'm going to, cause children are made small, relatively speaking. I'm going to help you. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to block your arm that's trying to hit. I'm going to physically and emotionally help you. 
So that was a long way to talk about eye to eye. So we talked about the four mistaken goals, uh, the 52 tools that you can get emailed into your email, uh, your mailbox every week. Um, and we talked about one particular tool, eye to eye, um, in correction. So I hope that is helpful. Bye.